Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they, they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things which we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent, sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Almighty God and Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, filling and renewing all creation by your eternal spirit, and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, in mercy cleanse our hearts and lips that, free from doubt and fear, we may ever worship you. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, the children are invited to come forward for the children's devotion. Good morning, everyone. How's it going? Doing well? How many of your parents have you do chores around the house? 
Nobody? Maybe I was just weird growing up. Okay, we got a few. Good. My parents were always making me do chores. What are some of the chores that you have to do? Unload the dishwasher. You have to clean your room. Go out and pick up sticks from the yard so your dad can mow or your brother. Yeah. You have to pick up the rocks so your dad can mow. Yeah. See, these are things that your parents give you to do because you can probably handle them on your own, right? But what if your parents told you to go out and build a shed for the mower to be stored in? They just gave you a hammer and said, go do it. Or they told you to change the oil on the car or get up on the roof and clean out the gutter. Those are things that you probably wouldn't want to do on your own, right? Those are some hard jobs. I don't even know if I can do some of those jobs. I'm still working on learning how to change my oil, so I still need somebody there with me when I do it. It's good to have somebody there with you when you go to do things. And your parents would never send you out alone to do those things. And if they did, you would probably hope that they'd at least offer you some guidance, be with you along the way, or maybe even hope that they did most of the work themselves. Yeah. That's, that's cool, too. <laughs> and sometimes, but today we're going to hear in one of our readings what Jesus tells us to do. He gives us a job to do, and it is a big one. He tells his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. And when I hear that, I, I get a little scared sometimes. It's comfortable being here in church where you hear about Jesus all the time and at home where your parents tell you about Jesus. But to go out and make disciples of all the world, when Jesus told his disciples that, they probably would have had those same thoughts. Man, if only you could go with us, Jesus. If you would be with us to guide us along the way. But as we'll hear Jesus say, he is with us at all times. Whether it's cleaning our room, picking up rocks in the yard, or sharing Jesus' love with others, Jesus promises that he is always with us no matter what we go through in life. And that is such a comforting thought to know. As we go forward from here today, no matter what happens in life, we know that God is always with us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the promises that you have made us. We thank you for bringing us into your family through baptism and through your word. Thank you for looking out for us and always being there for us, even when we feel alone. Put people in our lives. Remind us that you are always with us, no matter what we go through. Continue to encourage us as we go forward from here today to live out our faith and share the love that you have for us with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. First reading this morning comes from Genesis chapters 1 and 2. The triune God created the universe and everything in it, including male and female in his image. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. 
and it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teemed and that moves about in it, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every, every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for fruit, food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was an evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our psalm of the day, Psalm 8.
second reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Through the blessing of the triune God, Christians are able to live in unity and peace with one another. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. gospel this morning comes from Matthew chapter 28. This will be the basis for today's sermon. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 586.
As mentioned, our sermon is based on the words from Matthew chapter 28. You would feel free to follow along with a copy of Good News Notes found in your service folders. Just over a week ago, a few of us had the opportunity to go over to Mequon, Wisconsin and attend the call services at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. It's where I go to school along with all my classmates, and it was there that where, where we heard who our next vicar here will be, along with where 28 other vicars will be sent out to serve. The following morning, we went and saw the graduate service, where we heard where 45 graduates will be sent to serve as pastors, from the Philippines to Modesto, California, from Boston, Massachusetts to Alberta, Canada, from the shore of Florida to Watertown, Wisconsin. It was awesome to hear where all of my fellow classmates, all my uh, fellow yeah, students would be sent to go and spread the gospel. I'm sure they're all excited and overjoyed to share, to baptize, and teach about the love that their Savior has to other people throughout the world. But I'm also sure that they were all probably slightly terrified, too. Going from a school where we are surrounded by students and professors who teach and encourage us the word every day, to going somewhere out in the world where the only established relationship that we might have with somebody is maybe our wife and our kids. Well, not me, but maybe my classmates. Very excited to get started, yes, but maybe also terrified of being alone. Now, you, you don't have to go through eight years of school and be sent off to some far corner of the universe to feel that way. You could feel that way as soon as you leave these doors this morning. Because this morning we heard Jesus give his disciples a call, a job, a mission, something that he wants them to do. He says to go and make disciples of all nations. And that includes you, too. And when you aren't sitting here surrounded by people that believe and teach and say the same things, encourage one another with the word, when you go out from these doors to live out your faith among the world, it's easy to feel as if we're doing it alone. That fear is something that Jesus' disciples would have had, I'm sure, and it's a fear that many of Jesus' disciples today still have as well. But as we focus on our triune God today, and the words that he has for us, we're going to see that alone is the one thing that we never are. You see, the disciples were also about to leave the door. Not the door of any building, but I'm sure they were about to leave the door of their comfort zone, so to speak. They had been with Jesus nearly his entire ministry. They were able to run to him when they had questions, to rely on him to do all the miracles, driving out of demons, and at this major turning point in the disciples' life, Jesus gives them that job to do. He says to go. Not stay together and huddle up. Not lock yourselves in a fortress and guard against the outside world. He says go. And it's because of that command to go and make disciples of all nations that we know this group of verses as the Great Commission. The command that Jesus gives his disciples that followed him throughout his ministry and the command that Jesus still gives his disciples today. Bill, it, it would be nice if we just didn't hear that command. If we could just stay together, huddled up in this room, you know, have encouragement from one another. If we didn't have to go out to the world, then we could always be in our comfort zone. We could always encourage each other with prayer, with the word, we could wake up every morning with a devotion, pray before we eat, sing before we go to bed. And as nice as that would be, that's not what Jesus says. He says, go. Go out into the world and make disciples. Leave your comfort zone. And the transition that we have might not be as grand as the disciples who had seen Jesus' his whole ministry, and now we're going to watch him in a few days ascend into heaven but we also leave our comfort zone. We go out into the world every time we leave the doors of this church. Here at Good News, we hear and surrounded 
we hear and are surrounded by that good news of what Jesus has done in his commands. We're surrounded by fellow believers and followers, and as soon as we leave these doors, it's, it's easy to feel that loneliness, feel like we are alone in our faith. We don't have Jesus visibly living among us, with us as we die, and as we go out to our social events, most of the time we don't have pastor right next to us, so we can just lean on him, say, oh, you got a question, uh, pastor's right here, let's talk to him. Sometimes we don't even have a fellow believer anywhere nearby, and it's just us. Where does that leave us? How does that leave us feeling? Sure would be nice if we had the power that the disciples did to show off our faith, heal the sick and disabled, speak in tongues, speak prophecies that just came to us, but we we don't even have that either. Now as we go forth from good news today, it'll be easy to feel alone, and sometimes it's more than just in our faith. While many of us are blessed to have relationships outside of church, I'm sure that we have all gone through times where it feels like we don't even have those. We go to work or school and come home and that's it. Don't necessarily have any friend group to hang out with, any social group to go to, especially when you need it most. When you truly feel alone, it can feel like the entire weight of the world and the entire weight of our faith is on our own shoulders with no help in carrying it. And that's really why the words that Matthew leaves us with today are so comforting. The reason why these last four verses of Matthew get all the attention that they do are because of the words that come after, go. If you read through the Gospel of Matthew, you'll see how these four verses really sum up so well what Matthew has been saying throughout his Gospel. At the beginning of the Gospel, maybe you remember back to Christmas Eve when I was standing up here and and I was reading that list of names that just sounded like a bunch of consonants and vowels just shoved together. But those names showed us Jesus' lineage. It showed how he descended from the royal line of King David. A few chapters later we go and we hear how Jesus was on top of the temple and the devil laid out the world before him and said, you can have authority over all this if you just bow down and worship me, Jesus. And Jesus here says, after he's defeated sin, death, and the devil, all authority has been given to me. We hear how Jesus tells his disciples to then go and baptize. And again, we think back to Matthew in the work of John the Baptist, how he was calling people to repent and baptizing them. And then we think to Jesus' baptism, where the Father spoke from heaven to a son and the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, three persons, one God, all present. That one name that we're celebrating today. All present at Jesus' baptism, and we'll see in a moment that he's still present here with us today. Let's continue with the verses. After that, he tells his disciples to teach and how to do it, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And again, we think back to the beginning of Matthew, Matthew Matthew chapters 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount, as it's known, where Jesus gives us a whole new perspective on the Ten Commandments, and we think of how Jesus kept them all perfectly for us. And finally, we hear Jesus say, Surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. And we think back once again. Advent and Christmas. I don't know if you remember the worship series, but it was called Home for More Than Christmas. And it was based off of that name that we hear in the beginning of Matthew. It was based off that name for Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. A God who came to us in the flesh to live and die in our place. And we hear him say, Emmanuel, God with us, close out the book by saying, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus was not going to leave his disciples alone with the major task, the impossible task for them to complete. He didn't leave his disciples alone, and he doesn't leave us alone either. There's another way in which 
this final promise really wraps up what Matthew is saying throughout his whole gospel so well. If you read through the gospel of Matthew, you'll hear over and over again a phrase that goes something like, this was done to fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken through the prophets. Over and over again, you'll hear that phrase. And over and over again, we hear how Jesus fulfills every promise that was made to us about a Savior. So it makes sense After seeing how Jesus kept every promise through Matthew and all the other Gospels as well, that he would leave us with a promise. That he would say to us, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Those words, they're so comforting for us because they show us who God clearly is. We sell, today we specifically celebrate that one name that was mentioned in the gospel, baptizing them in the name. Maybe you didn't notice, but it's singular. And yet he goes on to say, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're celebrating Trinity Sunday. And by confessing that one name in three persons, that one God in three persons and three persons and one God, that reveals an essential part of God's nature. It shows us that God, by his very nature, is a relational God. That before mankind was ever created, God was never alone. Well, what does that mean for us? That means God didn't create us to be his bond so that he could be entertained by us, and he didn't create us because he got bored and wanted somebody to talk to. No, God created us out of his love. And maybe you've heard before, but God is love. That doesn't get much clearer than the words that we heard in that long first reading, the creation account, when uh, God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. But there is a way in which we see our God even clearer. Because after we lost that image, after the fall into sin, God personally came to us to live and die in our place. God does not leave us alone. Even though he ascended into heaven to be at his Father's right hand, we know that he is ruling over all things for our good. We also confess that even though we can't see him, he is with us always. We also see how he still comes to us in his word, that word that we read this morning and the word that is written down for us throughout the entire scripture. And he comes to us in the sacrament, in baptism, in holy communion. No, God does not leave his disciples alone and he does not leave us alone either. By God's very nature, he is personal, he is interactive, and he is loving towards us. That personal, interactive, and loving God established that relationship with us by coming to us. And he continues to be with us. So we can know when he promises, surely I am with you always, that is a promise that he keeps. We know that we will never be alone. So as you go out those doors this morning, hold tight to that promise. Hold tight to the promise that God is with you always. When it feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, when it feels like the weight of your own faith is on your shoulders, know that God took that weight and he placed it on his son to carry it for you. Now, we might not have that power to speak in tongues or to heal others of their sickness or disabilities, but we do have that power of the word. The word which tells us who God is and what he has done for us. That he is an interactive, a personal, and a loving God. And that interactive, personal, and loving God is with us as we interact, relate, and love all people throughout the entire world. It's a love which means that alone is the one thing that we never are. Amen. Please stand as we continue by confessing our faith using the Athanasian Creed. Who 
Whoever wishes to be saved must, above all else, hold to the true Christian faith. Now this is the true Christian faith. We worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, without mixing the persons or dividing the divine being. For each person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is distinct. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory and co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father is infinite, the Son infinite, and the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father is eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. Yet they are not three who are eternal, but there is one who is eternal. Just as they are not three who are uncreated, nor three who are infinite, but there is one who is uncreated, and one who is infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit is almighty. Yet they are not three who are almighty, but there is one who is almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Yet they are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Yet they are not three lords, but one Lord. For just as Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually to be God and Lord, so the true Christian faith forbids us to speak of three gods or three lords. The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten of anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but is begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And within this Trinity, none comes before or after, none is greater or inferior, but all three persons are co, are co equal and co eternal. So that, oh, sorry. But all three persons are co eternal and co eternal. So that in every way, as stated before, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Whoever wishes to be saved must have this conviction of the Trinity. You may be seated. We pray. Triune God, you are the one eternal God, whose name we praise forever. We would not have known you if you had not revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God. Remove from us all doubt and grant us humble faith as we contemplate this high and holy mystery. Enlighten and empower us to worship you as the triune God, the Holy Trinity. God our Father, whatever good is in us, whatever good things we have, and whatever good we do comes from you alone. In you we live and move and have our being. Open our eyes to see the gifts you provide every day, purely out of your own love and care. Lord Jesus, our Savior, you came into our world to make the Father known to us. You joined yourself to us by taking on our humanity and brought us back to God by shedding your blood. In love, you walked the way of suffering and carried the wrath of God that we deserve because of our sins. Help us believe that all you did and all you endured, you did to rescue us and set us free. In the bright new hope of your resurrection, teach us to offer our lives in praise to God and love to our neighbor. Creator Spirit, you breathe into us new life by the power of the gospel opened our eyes to see the light of your grace, and filled our minds with the clear sound of your voice. Through word and sacrament, lead us to understand more completely how broad and deep and high is the love of God and Christ Jesus. From up our resolve to do battle with Satan and sin. 
in every weakness be our strength, that we may show ourselves to be God's children, faithful in prayer, constant in hope, and fervent in love. Holy Trinity, you are the God of glory, the God of grace, and the God of all comfort. We rejoice to call you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and praise your name forever. Amen. This time we continue with our offering. A special request today to please fill out the connection form on the back of your service folder by scanning the QR code or by going to goodnewslc.org slash connect. Pastor Bauer usually remembers all your faces and names, so he's able to take attendance. I'm not that talented yet, so if you want to let the pastor know that you were here today, go ahead and do that. If you'd like to give an offering online, feel free to, going, feel free to go to goodnewslc.org slash give. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Please stand. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn, hymn 600.
Good morning again. Thanks again for coming, to, especially to all our guests and vicar, or visitors. Sorry. <laughs> if you're wondering where Pastor Bauer is, he is on vacation in Louisville with his family. He should be back uh, early this week sometime. So prayers for him as him and his family come back from vacation. Uh, no major announcements today. The one thing that I need to highlight is the Frolic Parade on June 11th. We're hoping to get a little over 20 people to either ride on the float or walk along in the parade. And I think we're still just under 20 about. So if you're free next weekend, it's really easy. It's fun to go and give all the kids the uh, accessories like wristbands and info about our soccer camp that's coming up. And speaking of soccer camp, we're always looking for more volunteers and uh, for more kids to get registered too. So other than that, I don't think there's any major announcements today. Um, God bless you a week. Thank you again for joining us today.